So welcome back to an introduction to HTML and CSS. And in this lesson, we're actually going to be building the homepage for our website. So in this lesson, we'll build the homepage for our website. We'll build the structure of our web page. We'll build an HTML5 document we'll, that will hold the content for our homepage. We'll discuss the basic skeleton of a web page. We'll add our head section, discuss some of the elements of the head section, and then build the body section of the page. We'll be using a div element to hold our content add a title to the page using an H1 element, and we'll discuss what these elements do, plus discuss the different headings that are available in HTML, and then using a paragraph tag or a P tag, add a couple of paragraphs using lorem ipsum filler text. Lorem ipsum text is something that we use a lot in web development and actually fills in areas of our page as we're designing the structure for it so we don't actually have to have real content. Using the section tag, we'll break our document into a section and explain how the section element is to be used in HTML5 and the importance of it for SEO. And then using an image tag, we'll add a couple of images so that you can see how easy it is to add images effectively to your web pages. We'll add an attribute to our image tag by utili utilizing the alt attribute, and I'm going to explain the importance of that alt attribute inside SEO. We'll discuss the importance of that inside of SEO because the alt attribute as of the last couple of years, is very important in how search engines look through our website and determine the importance of the site. So let's go ahead and build our homepage. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of our presentation, get into our development environment, and I introduce you to the development environment inside of our introduction. One thing I do want to point out is where you're going to be storing your files. If you did the default save settings from the Apache server, so when you installed your Apache server, it created a directory called XAMP inside your Macintosh. That'll be inside your Applications folder inside the Windows PC. It's going to be in your root directory or inside your Windows system. It'll be in your root directory. Your files, if you go inside the XAMP folder, are going to be saved in a folder called htdocs. So what you want to do is inside that folder, you actually want to create a folder for these files. I've actually called mine intro to HTML CSS. You'll notice it's not inside this folder because I have my server set up a little bit differently, but yours will be inside this folder if you followed along with the standard basic Apache install. So just create a folder in here called HTML, CSS, or however you want to name it. And that's where I want you to save all these files for your demonstration as you work through these demonstrations. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. I'll be using Sublime Text 3 is my text editor. I've already gone and navigated to that directory, intro to HTML. That's the folder that I actually created inside my web server that's going to store all these files. And I'll be using Google Chrome as my browser for this particular demonstration. And what I've done with my browser is I've actually gone into the local host. That's what you'll want to type inside your URL and then scroll to that directory that you just created so you're inside that directory. And that's where we're actually going to be working with these particular files. Okay, so the first thing we want to do to build our initial page structure is that we actually want to set up the page as an HTML5 document. I'm going to go ahead and copy a lot of this code so you don't have to watch me type it, just so you don't, again, have to watch me type this. But we're going to do a less than sign exclamation point doc type space HTML. That actually tells the rendering engine inside your browser that this is an HTML document. The next thing we're going to do is set up our HTML tag elements to tell it what language we're using. So I'm going to come right below that and open up an HTML tag with that less than sign HTML. I'm going to put a space LANG, which is an attribute of the HTML tag, and it's going to be equal to EN inside quotation marks. And that just tells the browser that this is an HTML document that's going to be rendered inside the rendering engine of the browser. Next thing we want to do is we want to open up some head tags. This is the head section of our document and it actually stores a lot of pretty important information inside this. I'm going to go ahead and indent this also inside this head section. It actually tells the page how what the title is and what our metadata is for our particular page. We're not going to go into a lot of metadata inside this tutorial series because that's kind of outside the realm of an introductory class, but that's where you'd have things like the description of the page, the keywords for the page, the author of the page, the last time the page was updated, and I'm going to show you where you can get more information on the meta information that goes in the head section, but it's actually very important for 
your SEO for rendering. We are going to use one meta tag, and that's our character set, and that tells the rendering engine what type character set we're using for this particular document. And we're using UTF-8, which is pretty much standard across the board for all of our web pages. Most web pages will use the UTF-8 character set. The next thing we want to do is we want to add a title to the page. And I'll show you in a minute where this title goes. But this title actually is part of the tab structure of our page itself. So if we save all these changes, let's go ahead and save these. And again, we want to save them in the directory we just created. I'm going to call this index.html. There's two types of pages that we can have auto load inside HTML. We can have an index.html page or a home.html. I'm going to use index. And what that does, it auto loads the page whenever we go to that directory. So if I refresh this browser now, you'll notice I've got a blank screen, but my first web page shows up on the tab. That's the title that we just typed right here. But now that page is auto loaded inside my rendering engine because I called it index.html. It would have done the same thing had I called it home.html. The next thing I want to do is I want to set up my body elements. So I'm going to come right below that opening or the closing head tag and I'm going to open a body tag. The information that we put in between the opening and closing body tag is what actually displays inside of our browser window, inside this big white space, and that's where our actual web page resides. So I'm going to come down a couple of lines and I'm actually going to close that body tag because again, in HTML, with 98% of our tags, we have an opening tag and a closing tag. There's a couple exceptions and you'll see those as we work through our exercise. And now inside my body element, I'm just going to put a comment and you'll notice the comments formatted with a less than sign, exclamation point, two dashes, and then I'm just going to say page content, two dashes, and a greater than sign. That's how we add comments inside HTML. And we use a lot of comments in HTML, especially as the pages become complex, so that we can actually see things that are going on inside our page, and we understand what's supposed to be in particular sections of the page. So I'm going to go ahead and save all these changes. Let's go ahead and refresh our browser, and you can actually do that by using this little circular mark that reloads the page, and you'll notice we've got nothing inside the browser yet because we haven't put anything inside of our body tags. We're going to fix that in a minute. So the first thing I want to do is inside my body element, I'm going to add a div, and a div is a division inside HTML. It actually sets up a portion of our screen, and I'm actually going to have a closing tag for that div. So I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. This is a great time, by the way, for you to pause if you want to go ahead and type all this in and catch up to where we're at. Because now the next thing I want to do is I want to add a heading to our page. So inside my div element, I'm going to come down a line and I'm going to open up an H1. And we actually have six size headings that we can use in HTML, H1 through H6. You're going to see us use a couple of them through this demonstration. And I'm just going to type in here the main title of the site. and then I'm going to close that H1 element. And the reason it's called an element, you'll hear us refer to these as tags or elements. The element is actually the tag and everything the tag contains, whereas the tag is the actual H1 itself and the closing H1. So you'll hear a lot of people refer to those as the same thing. Really they're not because an element is the tag and the content, whereas the tag itself is just the H1 tag. Good time to pause to type that in. One of the important things I want to point out about an H1 element, when you're designing web pages, every page should have one H1, and that H1 should pertain to the main content for that particular page. And the reason I say that is SEO uses that H1 element to distinguish what's important about this particular page as the web spiders and the web crawlers search your page for rankings. So remember, every page should have one H1, and you should never have more than one H1 on a page, and that H1 title should pertain to the main content for that particular page. Now, if we save those changes, refresh our browser window, we actually have something now that's inside the body section of our element, or of our web page. We actually have that title now, and you'll see that title displayed inside your browser. So now let's add a little bit of content. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple paragraphs. So I'm going to come right down below my H1. I'm going to open up a P tag or a paragraph tag, and then I'm going to paste what's called lorem ipsum text inside that element or inside that tag. 
See, I just did the same thing I told you that most people do. And then I'm gonna close that P tag. So now I've got a paragraph of text and lorem ipsum text is just filler text that web developers use to fill in content as they're designing websites. You can actually search lorem ipsum, L-O-R-E-M-I-P-S-U-M in Google and they actually have lorem ipsum generators that you can use to actually generate filler text as you're building your web pages. I actually have a plugin for my web browser that actually allows me to go in and just grab a couple paragraphs here and there whenever I need them. They've got some good plugins for Google, Firefox, um, Internet Explorer, Opera. They all have their own lorem ipsum plugins if you want a plugin. You don't have to use a plugin because you can actually use the lorem ipsum website also. And I'm going to go put another paragraph of text right below that. So I'm going to come down right below that closing P tag and add another opening and closing P tag with some additional text. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up so you can see what we've done. I'm gonna go ahead and save all these changes. This is another good time to pause if you wanna go ahead and catch up where we're at. I am gonna refresh our browser window and now you'll see we actually have that main title and two paragraphs inside of our browser window that's being rendered. So real quick, let's talk about the H1 tag. In HTML, there are six heading tags, H1 to H6. They're used to define HTML headings. H1 defines the most important heading inside your page, and H6 defines the least important heading inside your tag. So again, that's how you want to use these. If I had some subheadings underneath that main heading, I'd actually have either an H2, an H3, an H4, depending upon what I was looking for for that particular paragraph. And as we work through the exercise, you're actually going to see me use a couple different headings inside of our paragraphs. These P tags that we put in, they define paragraphs of content or paragraphs of text. Broaders, browsers automatically add space and margin before and after each P element. It's built in to their default styling. So you'll notice we actually have space between our paragraphs and it's actually set those up as paragraphs. And again, it's because of the default styling that's put into the browser rendering en engines as they display this content without any additional styling. We're actually gonna take care of some of that default styling in a little while as we work through the exercise. Because a lot of times you won't want the default styling that they put in there as part of your page. Another thing real quick I wanna explain is document flow. You'll notice that as we put these tags in, they're flowing top to bottom. That's normal document flow inside of a browser engine or inside of a rendering engine, inside of a browser window. It's important to understand normal document flow because that's how we actually set up the page using CSS. And you're going to see that when we get into the CSS section. It actually makes a difference how you set things up as to how they're going to display inside of our browser rendering engine. We can change normal document flow using CSS and actually we can change it using JavaScript. But for basic web design, you want to remember normal document flow flows from top to bottom and that's how it's going to dis be displayed inside your browser window. Okay, so let's add a section tag to the opening and closing tags of our document. I'm gonna come up here right under our S1, or H1, S1, and I'm gonna add what's called the section tag. These are new to HTML. Section elements became part of HTML5, and I'm gonna come right down below my closing P tag, because I wanna make this entire two sets of paragraphs one section. And again, I hope you're following along. I'm going to indent these paragraphs inside my text editor because I want them properly indented. It makes it easier to follow your code flow. And we actually do use section elements to break up our documents in HTML. It just makes it easier to style things if we're going to have different types of sections, as you're going to see when we get into the styling aspect of the introduction series. The section tag defines sections in a document such as chapters, headers, footers, or any other section of the document that you want to bring out or specify to be formatted in a different way. And again, you're going to see that as we work through this exercise. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add a couple images to this page because right now we've got a nice little page that's got a heading and a couple paragraphs. Let's add a couple images because let's face it, a web page without images is like a day without sunshine. You've got to have images on your website. That's what draws people to your content is the images themselves. When you downloaded the free tutorial series, there's actually an image folder included in the series. So you've got the same images that I'm working with throughout this demonstration that you can also use for your demonstration or for your walkthrough. 
So make certain that you've got that images directory inside the root directory of the site you're working on and make certain you've got the three images that I've included inside there as part of your exercise files. So now let's go ahead and add the code to add these images to our page. I want the images to appear at the top of the page for right now because I want to show you more about this normal document flow. So we're going to add the images right under our heading one heading and the first image I'm going to add is for image one. So I'm going to come right under that heading and I'm going to open up my image tag that IMG, my less than sign IMG. It's got a source attribute that actually points to where that image is located and you'll notice it's in quotation marks. I'm going into the images directory and then I'm going image1.jpg and that's the actual image that's inside that image directory. Notice I've got a complete path that takes me from wherever this document is to that image. So this document has to go into the images folder and then load the image. And I've also included another attribute called alt that describes that image. The alt attribute is extremely important for SEO. Make certain that you put good descriptive text as to what that image is for. And again, this not only pertains to your SEO, but it also helps out screen readers for anyone that's visually impaired that can't see those images or for some reason they can't view the image. It gives them a description of what that image is. Right below that, I'm going to put in our second image. So I'm going to come right below the first one we just created. And basically it's the exact same code, but I've changed the image name and obviously the alt text so that it loads the second image. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. Great time for you to pause if you need to type that in. I'm going to go ahead and refresh our browser window and now you'll see we've got these two monster size images as well as our two paragraphs that are inside the document. I've used large images for a reason. They have been optimized for the web, but I want to show you that we can actually size these images using CSS, which is what we're going to do when we get to the CSS portion, portion of the, the lesson in the event that you don't have any graphics programs where you can manipulate images, you can actually size them through your CSS file. Now, best practice is to size the images correctly inside a graphics program. It actually speeds up page loading and a whole bunch of other things. If you're going to have a photo viewer and you want a large and a small image, there's nothing wrong with sizing the image to the size you want when it go actually goes into the viewer and then reducing that size in CSS for your thumbnails that people can click on to actually view the image. In fact, that's pretty much common practice across the board when it comes to web developers. But again, keep in mind, you do want to optimize the image for the web. So you don't want some 50 megabyte image in there and then you shrink it down because it's still going to take forever to load that image. You want to make the images as small as you can and yet still keep that quality as best you can for your web page. So the image tag defines an image in your HTML document. The image tag has two required attributes, the source attribute or SRC, which tells it where the image is located and the alt attribute, which actually gives it a text description of the image itself. Images are not technically inserted into an HTML page. Images are linked to the HTML page through the image tag itself and it just holds a space for the reference to that particular image. So keep that in mind. Without the source attribute, you're not going to see an image. To link an image to another document, you simply nest the image tag inside of an anchor tag. And you're going to, we'll see that in a little while. We're actually going to be using the anchor tag when we build our links. And again, we're going to look at let anchor tags in the next lesson. So you'll understand exactly what I mean by anchor tags when we get there. So let's move on. 